Welcome to Lip Service, the show about comics, manga, and graphic adventures. I'm your host, Stash Jenkins. For those of you who don't know, Lip Service focuses on the independent artists, studios, and writers to give them a voice in the comic book industry and to give them a chance to showcase their various talents. Over the next few minutes, it is Lip Service's intent to show the artistry that is graphic adventures and the men and women behind their creation. So let's get started. Caters to sci fi, manga, which is Japanese comics and British television. Howard, welcome to Lip Service. Well, thank you, um, Rod. Good no. to be here. Good. Howard, what got you involved in comics in the first place? Well, I've been a comic book fan since the 1960s. My first, the first comic books I read was um, actually the first that comic book I read was like Batman. Okay. And what happened was, um, you know, in the 60s, you're a kid, you look at, you, you, you're always reading comic books. So I just kept on reading them. And, and then by the 70s, not only was I reading comic books, but um, I started to work at one of the first um, comic book stores in Chicago. Okay. And then from that point on, by the 80s, I was actually on my own store. And okay. I just got involved in so many things in comic books to where... By the 80s, you know, not only was I doing them, but um, I was working with um, people like, you know, Alan Moore, which I met in England a few years before. Um, I was working with people like uh, Jamie Gillis, um, even people like um, uh, John Byrne. I mean, back then in the 80s, the, the, a lot of the comic book artists um, was coming to my shop. I had a shop um, called um, Hepcat Comics here on the north side of Chicago. Right. Okay. And they just kept me. They kept me in comics for a long time. I mean, I just like comics, and that's when I got into. You know, I started. You know, being on that side of being a dealer as opposed to reading them, um, it, it just became part of who I was. Okay. And so now, now that you are on the non-dealer side, what changes have you seen within the industry that have that have either helped it or hurt it? I think the one thing, I am I think the industry has really been hurt. Um, you know, I was looking at Marvel and DC, and right now I'm like with Marvel and DC. I just want them to stop what they're doing because right now you got, you got Marvel doing Marvel now, which is, you know, they got to redo the heroes again. Right. They just redid the heroes a few years ago with Marvel, um, the Ultimates, and then DC, DC, you know, back in the 80s when they did Final Crisis, they said, we're going to wipe out all these heroes so you just have one continuity. Right. Now with comic books right now, you have no idea what you're reading. First, Batman's dead, he's alive. Superman's dead, he's alive. No, we're going to be doing a new Superman, we're going to be doing a new Batman, we're going to do just what we know. And then in Marvel, it's the same way. It got to a point where comic books where it's like they don't want to stop and say, Let's just do one continuity, one great, one great story. Instead of they kind of jump around. I mean, it. it you know, I, 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 you know, I was online the other day, and you know, the Justice League. You know, DC said, "Well, let's do um, instead of having Superman and Lois Lane, we're going to have Superman and Wonder Woman. They're going to have a, a fair. You know, you're like, okay, that's fine. Then you, you know, and then you have with. Um, Marvel, Marvel's got the Uncanny X-Men and the new Avengers and the other brand new Avengers and they got two different Spider-Mans and, right. and you're like, you got three or four different versions of the Fantastic Four to where now, if you look at the comic, you have no idea where you're going with it. Mm-hmm. And therein lies the whole crux of the situation with with them and their multiple with their multiple storylines, which really makes it confusing for for just about anybody to latch onto an arc or or get into a story. And therein lies which makes things just all that more difficult. You know, yeah, it, 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 it does make it difficult. I mean, if you're looking at any types of the comics right now, I mean, I've you know I've read some. I've actually like more the independent comics than I do. We don't have to follow the majors. We have our own little niche audience that will read what was our comics and look at the type of artwork that we're doing. And we can stay with that market because they're disenfranchised with the larger markets. Right. And saying, well, I, I just don't want to read, I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to go out and buy 57 different comics to find that story arc. I mean, that's, that's the thing that Marvel and DC have been doing for almost 20 years when they come out with a series. It's like, 
you know, it's like Blackest Day. You just did Blackest Day and said, okay, one comic, Blackest Day. But no, they're going to make you buy 15 comics right. to get that story. And and therein lies, and that's the part that uh, in my day, which was pretty decent, that I was enjoying. But now that they've gone through through all this and what someone and whatnot has burned me out, because now um, I remember I, I was collecting old two thousand, you know, several different times just to get to get just to get through one story arc. I mean and back in those days it was a great it was a great marketing tool, but now with everybody just tired of flipping here, flipping there, and they all want it in just one particular one particular set, I think. Well I mean when you look at when you look at comics right now, I mean the, the last really good story that was multiple issues was Civil War. Right. But even with Civil War the ending lets you kind of like, oh, is that it? Right. After going through all these books, it's like, oh, well, that's it. it, it it's, it's like uh, Earth X. When I read Earth X, I didn't even understand what Earth X was from Marvel. So, okay, don't, don't understand that one. And then, like I said, with, with DC with Final Crisis, they're like, did we do this before? Right. <laughs> no. You know, we've done this before. Why are you making me read this thing again? Mm-hmm. Um, but you have many series that are coming out, or new comics that are coming out, like right now, Dynamic um, Entertainment. Right. They did something I thought was really kind of brilliant. They went back, now you really have to be a comic book person to understand this. When they went back and they brought up all the Charles Bureau comics, they brought in Daredevil, they brought back the Black Chair, they brought back the Green Llama. Now, unless you read red comics as long as I have, these are comic books from the 40s and 50s. Right. These were brilliant characters. That when they brought them back, instead of saying to people, these are brand new characters, they just went, okay, these are characters from the, from the 40s and 50s. They, they were in the Civil War. I mean, they were in the World War II, and we're bringing them back. And, 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 they're, and they're taking that type of, uh, those type of characters and moving them forward and saying they have that old stability from the 40s and 50s. Right. And that's the, that dynamic look that's, okay, we... We need that as a whole to anybody's interest. Right. And you have to be able to do that. And, you know, you read some of the comics, and they're hoping that they're going to get that big seller, or that, that artwork is going to bring in this, you know, that, this audience. I've seen some smaller comic companies that have, maybe have the best artwork, but they have very good, good characters. Right. Because if you look at from... The standpoint of comics, when the first Batman, the first Superman, the first Flash, if you look at some of the earlier comics in the 40s and 50s, the artwork wasn't the greatest in the world. No. The storylines are good. Right. And as the comic evolved, as the comic evolved, you notice that the stories and the art got better because the artists are saying, I can, I'll try this. And then the writers said, well, we'll try this with that. I mean, it worked together. Right. You know, it worked. So, right. what... So my question is for for independence, what can they do in order? I mean, obviously you've already seen that they can beat the system, but now how can what what does what do independence have to do in order to be the system now? Well, if you look at some of the way the independents are doing it, I mean, some of the independents, you have one or two things you can do. You can be you can follow the system. If you look at Dark Horse Comics, Dark Horse Comics when they start doing the um, Hellboy movie. Mm -hmm. Dark Horse is following the same thing that DC and Marvel is. Okay, we got we got comics here, we can turn into movies. Right. Because that's where that's where everything is going. It's going into that movie vein. Right. Um, you have independent comics what what the independent comics can do right now is the same basically the same thing that a lot of small um, what IT companies can do with software. You can find your niche market. Right. And you can take the technology that's there. Because right now, the big technology right now is digital. Okay. Right. Right. When when you look at comics now, like right now in the New York Comic, New York Comic Con, mm -hmm. the one thing that they're looking at right now is they're having their second annual digital comics meeting. Where this meeting is going to be, this meeting is for distributors who are looking at making digital comics, that's where they're going to do their distribution at. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at something like Drive-In Comics, which basically is nothing but a digital comic store. Right. If you look at um, Comicology, which has been trying to do digital comics and, and they're there. If you look at DC and Marvel, all of these companies have looked at the fact that we can now start distributing on a level that we've never distributed before. Because before, if a comic book was doing, if you printed 100,000 comic books, even if you printed on demand, right? a DC or Marvel comic could consider themselves doing real well if they do anywhere between 100 and 300,000 comics. Mm -hmm. But online at the same time, if you have your comic online and you do distribution online, you can do 300,000 comics worldwide. Mm -hmm. and still have a very good comic, even though, you know, the comic is maybe not big in the U.S., it may be big in other places. I mean, right. Back in the 80s, when I started doing uh, comics um, from other countries, you know, you'd go to, you know, uh, old comic book companies like First Comics when they were doing um, American Flag by Howard Chaykin. Right. Even though American Flag was, was an okay seller here in the United States, in Europe... They couldn't get enough of it. First mm -hmm. Comics was selling more comics in Europe than they were here. The same thing with non-comics. And, you know, the same thing with, with Comico. Unfortunately, those numbers wasn't big enough for them because they had to deal with something that was raw paper. Right. But now with digital. digital distribution, you can put your comic book on a server, set it up to where the person can download it through an iTunes, and now that comic is in that person's hands, and that that person is now reading that comic whenever he wants to. Right. And you're charging 99 cents or a dollar to download that. You can go in and say, "Oh, this comic may not be hot in the U.S., but I, I got you know I just got hit with you know 20,000 downloads from Australia. Right. I got hit with another 40,000 downloads from Malaysia." And now my whole distribution, and the great thing about it is, I'm not, I don't have to worry about any physical paper. All mm -hmm. I have to do is keep the server up. Right. Then. And if I want to change the comic, if I want to change the, the direction of the comic or, or do something, have a special issue, I can have that special issue out the same day. Right. Because uh, all you got to do is make changes and upload it versus having right. to worry That's about print. That's all you have to do. Okay. And you can now use, you know, like a lot of comic books, if you look at um, online with social media, a lot of comic books now are, you know, they're inviting you to their Facebook page. Right. Which... You know, they're, they're, they're Twittering you and saying, this new comic is out with a link to the comic. So now your distribution channels have changed. Before, people had to go and bow down to Diamond Distributors. Mm-hmm. Right. To distribute the comic or do be an independent distributor and take it to the individual comic shop and say, Here, here's here's my here's my comic. Oh yeah. uh, would you like to take ten of them or twenty of them? Mm -hmm. And you say, Well, okay, fine so, but you know that those are so very, very low numbers. Your mm -hmm. your marketing efforts were was basically eating in, into your profit because you had to really market that comic or right. go to a comic book convention, which is still more money. But now you can hold you can basically hold a virtual convention online. Yeah, and I've seen that. People. Okay. Yeah. So to those conventions. Yeah, and and which 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 has been part of the discussion in in the old version of lip service to where a lot of people were saying that you know this this digital age is the new revolution and in a lot of ways and you brought up some very good points to where that is the truth but also at the same time um, the the thing I've been this um, finding out is still there's still a, a a bunch of people who prefer handling the ha having a physical copy in their hand and the other thing that I have found interesting is this is the fact that still I you know I it may maybe maybe not in my generation or in my lifetime but I will yet to see where a digital copy is going to fetch a million dollars or in yes, an right. auction well you see we have to look at you know I'm a I've been doing I still enjoy I still have physical comics at home I'm not that fact I of the digital comics I've downloaded, I've actually never really actually read, went through and read one on my computer, even though I have it 
you know, which right. is kind of funny because see, back ten years ago when I was working with Palm, we were we were Palm was actually looking at doing digital comics. As a matter of fact, the first digital comic that I read was an Archie comic on a Palm a Color Palm back in 1991. Okay. So it's not that digital comics is something new. It's almost 10, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. The thing about digital comics, just like with people who have, used to have vinyl and now they do everything on the iPod. <laughs> right. Same you thing. Still, I still think right now, you still have a lot of people who will go to a comic shop, they want to have it in their hand because they love the feel is the read of comics. And, right. and that's not going to go away. I'm not, I, that's going to go away. But, you also have to work, you have to look at comic book music. You have, you have two different sets of people you're going to have to go after. You have the comic book collector. Right. The comic book collector wants the comic. He wants to see it. He wants, he wants to, feel, to it. feel it. Right. He wants to have that, that I'm in this because this is who I am. Right. Now, now you have a comic reader. A comic reader is a person who, I just want to read the comic. You know, yeah. when I was younger, they had two versions. Of, and you'd go to a store and you'd read, you get a, a comic book with a nice clean cover and everything else. Mm -hmm. Or you go to the store and you have what's called, what was called um, coverless comics, which basically was just a comic. It didn't have the cover. Thing right, on it. the beat-up ones. just <laughs> the comic itself. And you read it, you, you didn't care what happened to it after you read it. It got burnt. To throw right. You, you probably, you know, you just threw it out and threw it in the corner. You didn't take care of it because you wasn't a collector. You just read the comic. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's it, what digital is. Digital right. is the photo comic, comic reader. Collector will still collect the comic. The comic reader will dump it into his computer. I read it there when I need it. Okay, yeah, and that and that's true. So now, so so you're so in, in a nutshell, the digital the, the the digital front is is where independents can gain access to the world and 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 make money. So so what does one? It's okay, so so what does a, let's let's just say um, I, I I I can say that okay, I'm an independent. Um, I've got my comics already set, as you know, uh, in print and digital. So what? So and we, and so what does an independent have to do in order to coordinate all that together to, into one nice little pretty package? Well, what what an independent would have to do, as far as a a comic company, you have to look at one leads into the other. Mm -hmm. Your digital readers. You go out to your digital readers and you say, "Here's my digital. Here's my digital comic. You mm -hmm. can read this." You, you take your digital readers, and once they get involved in your comic, they basically become fans. When they become fans of that, they want to be able to collect that. Now, the only thing about when they become collectors, now they want to have, they want to actually own the comic. Right. That's where your. That's where your people who are say, "I want to buy this comic. I want to." I want to have this at any time because, you know, I want to steal it. I want to see it. I want to put it into a box and say, just like a person collects books. Because mm -hmm. comics are just like books. A person, you know, a person that has a, an e-reader, they will read the book, but eventually one day they want to have the book. They want to have it because, first of all, if that person goes to a comic book shop or goes to a place where you're at, let me tell you, you really can't sign a digital copy, Okay. Okay. You, you really can't dis you can't sign it you can't really have a discussion with it you know you you really if you when a person becomes a real fan and collector of what you do mm -hmm. you that's when you're going to start putting out your actual books it leads it, one leads into the other I think that's what that's the same thing they do in music you can have an iPod the person look look the way some of the musicians do they they have you can download our music. You download yeah. our music, you read to the iPod, but eventually they want you to come to a store and get the CD. Yeah, that's true. That, that, they that's want true. you to buy that CD. But I'll give you a little bit, I'll give you some, this is my marketing deal, I'll give you something for free. Right. Just to pull you in. Mm-hmm. Or I'll give you something for a re reduced price. Right. To pull you in and say, here's gotcha. what I have, and then once I get you into my ecosystem gotcha show you everything that i have right i got you yeah, yeah. That, 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 and that's and that's and that's very true that is so true so and, you know and um 
and now with 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 all this going on now with um, independence, where does where does that leave um, comics overseas now? Uh, are, 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 are they are, are they two steps behind? Are they in the same boat? Are 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 is the market here still trying to play catch up? Well, if you look at comics overseas, I think what an independent would have to, what an independent have to understand is they, they, they you can, you can, you can act locally but think globally. Right. If you look at some of the comics right now, you have, if you go online right now and you go to, um, like driving comics or comicology or you can go to Facebook, you'll see a lot of independent comics from overseas. That are pulling in fans. I mean, if you look at look at things like look at first of all, look at Japanese manga. Okay. Japanese yeah. manga and everything else. These have been pulling in fans for years because yeah. they think on a global level. Comic book readers are comic book readers no matter where they are. Mm-hmm. If it's a good gauging story, I'll yeah. read it. I don't care where it came from. I'll read it. Right. And I think this is where this is where some of the independents lose their focus. I mean, you know, Marvel and DC has always had a worldwide view. That's true. I mean, there's not a place on the planet you can go and not know who they are. Exactly. Now, if you look at um, independence, so independence sometimes, they become so entrenched in being local, they forget that America is not the only place that people read comics. People read comics everywhere in the world. Especially right now, if you look at there are more comic books written in Asia than it is in the U.S. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's scary. I mean, when you look at if you look at some of the the, the the manga, go to a manga. If you go to a manga anywhere in Asia, you're going to have hundreds of thousands of comic book titles. And okay, as much as we look at um, comics now, Asian titles right now. Look at things like Akira. That's been going on for yeah. twenty years. Look at. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Look at yeah. um, Dragon Ball Z. Z. Mm-hmm. Uh, Naruto. You know, look, you know, all of those things, they started off as manga. Look at how big um, One Piece is. Yeah. Look how big Ghost in the Shell is. Yeah, that's those true. Those comics, you know, even some of the simplest Astro Boy has been around for 50 years. And still going strong. Yeah, that's true. Right. It's, it's a manga. And, and because they start on a global level. And I think a lot of times independence. Yes. Independence. And even this is the best. This is the best. This is the best time in the world for independence because now, because me is global, you can take a comic and have a, a worldwide sensation on a comic. When some when the mainstream of American media, I have never heard that comic, and they're doing a movie on it. Or right. They got toys that sell out everywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, those are the things because those companies are thinking on a global level. They're not thinking uh, this is just something that is a national thing. If you make if you make a comic the right way, even if you're an independent, and you do a comic the right way, it takes off and goes worldwide. I mean, if you look at like so if you look at something like One Piece, the guy who created One Piece, yeah, that comic took off. Fantastically, he can say, "Well, it's only a Japanese man. I'm going to, I'm going to worry about it." He looked at it. This is this story appeals to everyone. Yeah, it did. And I, I think this is where a good, an independent company will say, "Yes, this is this is this is how I'm going to look at my comic." Right. And now that I have, I can do distribution, marketing, and sales anywhere in the world. I can be pulling in sales from everywhere if I look at my comic mm-hmm. as a worldwide label. And that, and therein lies um, where most independents don't grab they 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 see they they see the forest for the trees they do they 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 like you said you know they just because they're small press should, should they should not be small minded um, right. with you know which is uh, uh, you know all, all part of it, it that that goes along with it and. And with you and your tomato vision, you 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 seem to have to have been the embodiment of all of of all that you've been saying for for all, all you know for the last, for all this time, you know. And I've seen the site; it it is phenomenal that you know you've managed to get a little bit of everything: comics, 
British tea, British sci-fi, manga, all all wrapped into one nice kid and caboodle, you know, and it's right there for people to see, you know. Well, you know, something like something when I started doing to me was actually to me was been like eighty years. And and Howard, um, it, it's been such a, well, there's so much, so much as always with you. There's always something always left on the table, but we got to wrap this up. So, okay. where can folks um, get a hold of you for, for, for more information and and to get further insight about independence comics and, and and really online marketing? Well, anyone can get in touch with me. They can go to um, my Facebook page. Um, we have Tomato Vision TV okay. on Facebook. And all my information is there because our Facebook page is right now, we've upgraded our Facebook page. We have actually um, 14 subsets of our Facebook page for Tomato Vision. We have Tomato Vision, um, we have Batman Forever, we have also, we have um, the Doctor Who Forever, but if you're looking at marketing, we have uh, the Nexus Entertainment Group. Okay. And the Nexus Entertainment Group is basically for retailers, marketers, artists. That's what we that's the part of our business that is basically keeps me for business. So over there you can find just about anything on how to do marketing. Mm -hmm. We'll work with you on how to do, be, a, be an online dealer. That's the Nexus Entertainment Group. That's something that um, we started because we have had people say, well, you know, how do I do this? Or um, they, want, they have a comic book store and they want to be able to... Um, put in technology, uh, because technology is going to be part of comics. You can't, yeah. get, you can't get around it. That's true. So, you know, if you want to start doing something like that and you want to take advantage of technology and, and basically marketing your, your, company, your comic book worldwide, that's something that I will be talking to people about, tell them how it's going to be doing. Also, with anyone who wants to do that, they have to be able to say, yes, I have a clear vision of what I want to do. I mean, right. one thing that we also want to teach people how to have a clear vision of, of where you want your comic company to go because mm -hmm. remember, every comic book company starts from a small company and become a large one. It's Damn. only because people realize they have a vision of where they want to go. Yeah, that's true. And that, that, that's so true. And so, folks, we have been talking via phone with Howard Lee. Um, been, he's been there, done that with comics, graphic adventures, manga, all points in between for over 25 years. A plethora of knowledge. And there's that word again, folks, plethora. And uh, so what I'm going to do is a little later on, uh, at the end of the show, I will rehab um, Howard's information so so that way you can write it down and get to him and and for those of you who are uh, mega fans I I highly recommend because I've been through tomatovisiontv.com is a, a, a good resource and so for lip service uh, Howard thank you so much and hopefully um, they, 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 hopefully so, sometime really in the real distant future we'll, we'll have you back on again how about that okay that'd be good Okay, and we'll be right back, folks. Welcome back to Libris. I'm Stats Jenkins. Next up is a book review. The book chosen is Serenade, Issue 5, entitled Dishonor, from publisher Kiss Me Comics. The book is 24 pages long, which includes the front and back cover. Serenade is written, drawn, and colored by Barbara Coney Jenkins. The first noticeable aspect of this book is the coloring. Uh, the book, which is watercolor, gives this book a unique tone and feel that most books just don't have. This artist uses the color to further guide the reader into a mood and tone within the story, as demonstrated by these upcoming two pages. Know how things get darker and bolder, subliminally guiding the reader into what's to come next. Next up is the writing of the story. I'm told that every serenade starts off with a poem page to set the tone and pace. What also makes serenade interesting is the story is told mainly from the main character's standpoint aside from any other character conversations. Also, fonts play a very big defining role in Serenade. Jenkinson's story leads you 
on a path of Serena and her husband's final moments together. Moments together, all of which leads up to the climax of the husband getting shot towards the end of the book. Now, uh, the only flaws I've seen in this book may be one of the qualities that gives this book its unique personality. The font used for a serenade narration, although reinforces the fact of serenade's oriental background, if the font is not the right size, some characters may be hard to read, thus slowing down the flow of the book. Also, for those who don't like little details, this book may not be for you as it goes through the mind of Serena's husband's hopes and dreams for Serena and their future. Also, serenade with a non-traditional storyline may not fit with may not fit with those who are who like the usual staple coming from mainstream publishing. However, if you're looking for a title that gives you that is different, gives you emotion through imagery and story, then serenade published by Kiss Me Comics is just may be for you. Now, if you want to purchase this book or wish to know more about Serenade or Kiss Me Comics, web links are included at the bottom of this video or somewhere. Plus, at the end of the lip service, there will be information on how you can contact the creator and or Kiss Me Comics. Also, if you have a book that you would like to have reviewed, an email address will be shown at the end of the show. So, when lip service comes back, some final thoughts. Welcome back to Lip Service. Earlier this month, Marvel Entertainment made the announcement that several titles were going pink to assist with fundraising for breast cancer, as October is National Breast Cancer Month. While I applaud Disney for taking up such a noble cause, I find it ironic that they choose to highlight a part of the female anatomy that for the better part of 60 years, Marvel artists have overdrawn on their female characters. Now, yeah. Now, while Marvel isn't the only publisher to do such, it is the only publisher owned by Disney that has the mantra of being wholesome family fun attached to it via Disney's other media outlets. Depicting women in any exaggerated form leads to unrealistic body images in both men and women's minds, causing a societal breakdown as a whole as men wish to have women that physically represent what's been presented to them. For women, this representation leads to body image issues, self-esteem issues as well. Disney, over the years, has had a share of controversy of its depiction of women, and it seems that it hasn't learned that it's talking from both sides of their mouth. Today's woman is better educated and better empowered to affect change and will do so in ways that will tell Disney to shape up real quick. Then perhaps Disney will accept another mantra it inherited, with great power comes great responsibility and that their images and messages are influencing current and future generations. And that about wraps up this premiere of Lip Service. Tune in next time as David Heyer, David Heyer will be our guest. Until then, keep an open mind. Good night.